When the Bamboo Lab A1 launched five months ago, I was really excited. It was just about everything I loved in the A1 Mini, but with a print volume that matched Bamboo's larger Core XY machines. The printer did well in my testing, and at launch, these machines were flying off the shelf. Well, this was short-lived, because about a month after the initial launch, a user shared that their bed cable had made a popping sound and had caught fire. Initially, it was unknown as to whether this was an isolated incident or something more widespread. Bamboo started with releasing a printable brace to reduce stress on the cable, but it was determined to not be enough to fix the faulty cable, and a recall was put in place. The options given to everyone that had purchased one of these was to return the printer, exchange the printer, or hold onto the printer so that way when a new bed or bed cable came out, you could make the swap. My unit is a review unit, but I was also given the option to either exchange the whole printer or hold out for that new cable, and I decided to wait and do the swap myself. Replacements are finally going out, and I've seen a mixed bag of responses for the repair, with some saying it was a really simple process, and others saying that it was more cumbersome than they expected. My new bed showed up last week, and because of this, I decided to cover that swapping process. Bamboo Lab has provided a video and guide for this process that I also recommend watching, but I'll share any other tips I find helpful along the way. I'm looking forward to getting this printer back up and running, so with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, let's open the replacement box to see what's included. I was originally under the impression it was going to just be a cable swap, but the replacement is the entire heated bed assembly. Along with that, there are four screws with Loctite to secure the new bed, and four silicone covers. The new cable has a mesh covering similar to what's on the wire running up the right side of the printer, and it's much thicker than the one that initially shipped with the A1. Before we can attach the new bed, we first need to remove and disconnect the old bed. The only tool you'll need for this is a 2mm Allen wrench. Make sure that your printer is switched off and your power cable is disconnected. Raise the x-axis and tool head by hand all the way to the top of the printer so that you have more room to work. Bamboo's guide tells you to push the bed all the way to the back before you remove the bed, but I actually found it easier to work with it if I pushed the bed all the way to the front first. If you haven't already, take the flex plate off of the bed to gain access to the attachment points underneath. Using your Allen wrench, insert it into each of the four silicone bed covers and pull upward at an angle to pop them off. Under each of those covers is a screw that needs to be removed. Remove all four screws and set them to the side along with those silicone covers. The new bed comes with replacement screws and covers, so we won't be reusing those. Next, grab the bed assembly and lift it off the printer. Pull it out from the back of the machine and set it off to the side where it won't be in the way. We're done with the top of the printer and now we need to gain access to the electronics underneath it. This requires leaning the printer to the back bottom left corner. When doing this, you'll either want to have the top corner of the printer hanging off of your work surface, or use something to prop it up. At the far left of the x-axis is where the nozzle cleaner and the purge launcher is. This isn't the most solid part of the machine, and the purpose of propping it is to keep the printer's weight off of that little arm. On the bottom of the printer, remove the three cables for the camera, Z-motor, and X-motor. These were installed when you initially assembled the printer and will pop right out. The USB-C cable, on the other hand, is held in place by a long screw in that same section. Use your Allen key to loosen it, then slide the box containing that USB cable away from the direction it's plugged in to disconnect it. There's still one set of cables running to that box that go into the bottom of the printer, so be careful not to force anything or pull too hard on those little cables. Next is removing both bottom panels from the printer. All screws are the same length and same type and are little self-tapping screws. There are six on the smaller back panel and 10 on the larger panel. The new bed doesn't come with replacements for these, so make sure you place them somewhere safe so you don't lose them or drop them on your carpet until they are safely installed back into the printer. Once you have the six screws out of the smaller panel, it should be fairly easy to pull on it to pop the cover off. There are some small clips on it holding it in place, but really the main thing that holds it to the bottom of the printer is those six screws. Do the same with the larger panel. There are four screws along the top and four screws along the bottom, then finally two screws in the middle. 
If like me, you're balancing your printer at an angle the entire time you're doing this, be mindful of that to prevent any accidents from happening. Then take both of the bottom covers and place them off to the side. The last step for the old bed is disconnecting four cables so that we can remove it entirely. The first three are on a small board beside the PSU. Starting with the AC cables, the stock ones are black and white. In Bamboo's guide, they mention that there are little clips that you should press when trying to remove them. I found these two cables to be really easy to remove as long as you grab them from the head as close to the board as possible. If for some reason you do have difficulty when trying to remove them, then squeeze on them to try and press in those clips because it really shouldn't require that much effort to get those pulled off. Above those two cables is the sensor cable. Just grab on that connector and pull up to remove. Make sure you don't accidentally pull on the small ribbon cable that's located next to it. For my printer, the sensor cable was held in with just a bit of tape on the top right corner, but I also got an early review unit and it seems like that maybe the final retail ones will have a bit of silicone glue there instead. If you have the tape, then just remove that tape. And if you have the silicone, you should be able to just grab the wire and basically pull through that silicone glue and it will just tear it, allowing you to remove and release that cable. The last cable to remove is the ground cable that's attached behind the smaller panel that we initially removed. There are two ground cables that look identical, but the one we need to remove is the lower of the two, as long as your printer is laying down in the correct orientation and of course not upside down. This is really the only unique screw in this entire disassembly because it has a little washer on there. So when you press onto the grounding cable, it fully seats that ring against the printer's frame. So be sure you put this one somewhere where you can easily distinguish it from the rest of the screws. Now we're ready to remove the old bed. At the point where the rubber bed plug meets the printer, pull outward. It'll catch on the slightly larger plug, but as long as you match the orientation of it to the cutout in the plastic frame and with a little angle and pull, it should pop right out. Pull all the cables you just disconnected it through and move the entire old bed assembly out of the way. Now it's time to redo what we just undid. Bamboo recommends mounting the new printer onto the frame before going in and doing the electronics, which is probably the safer option. Stand the printer back up, but make sure that that USB-C cable box and the wires you just connected are moved to the side to prevent them from being damaged by the weight of the printer. Grab the replacement bed and remove the couple of pieces of tape holding the wires in place on the bottom. Then set the bed assembly onto the printer, aligning it with the brackets that it will be riding back and forth on. Once you have it seated, you'll notice that there is some back and forth play. This is because the cavity it's sitting on forms an oval shape. Press on the front edge of the bed to align the bed correctly. Then use the four new screws provided with the replacement to attach it. I loosely installed one into each and then tightened them one at a time in a crisscross pattern. Finally, take the new silicone covers and place them into each of the four openings you just installed those screws into. With the bed physically attached, we are now back on the electrical portion of it. Tilt the printer on its side just like we previously did to gain access to the bottom. Next, feed the new cables into the opening in the back of the printer and into the electronics bay. The most important thing here is to make sure that your cable has no strain or twist to it. As long as you pull it straight and have it form just one curve into the electronics box like it sort of naturally wants to do, then you'll be good. Feed the sensor plug and the two AC wires in through the small opening that we removed the previous ones from so they go up to the board that we need to plug them into. This part is a little bit annoying and takes some time to get the cables to fish through. You wanna use your Allen key or even a screwdriver to help curve the wires towards you once they've been fed through. You should have plenty of slack and there is no reason to be forceful. The new AC wires are both black and the order for plugging them in doesn't matter. Just press them onto the headers and make sure that they are fully seated. For the sensor connector, it can only go in one way, so make sure you line up that plug correctly and then press it into its socket. The sensor wires will need to be routed around the standoff for mounting the panel. This is probably the most important step of this entire process to prevent accidental damage to your brand new bed or bed wire harness. It was tricky to get a good angle on camera, but I used both of my thumbs to push that cable as far down as I could around that standoff pillar. The new bed comes with a piece of tape to secure this cable in place. Bamboo's guide only shows the tape covering one side of the wires, but I found this to allow for more play on the other side than I liked. I recommend using the piece of tape to cover both sides of the wire. That tapes one side of it to the sidewall and the other side to the PCB, ensuring it's nowhere near that mounting hole. 
For the grounding cable, use that special screw with the washer to securely fasten it onto the same point you removed the existing one from. Make sure it's nice and snug to ensure a proper metal-on-metal -metal contact between the wire and your printer's frame. Finally, we get to feed the end of the new cable into the back portion of the printer's opening. This one had me scratching my head for a bit, so hopefully I can simplify it for some others. Start by pressing the rubber piece into the opening in the panel. It's rectangular in shape, so you have to make sure you align the plug to match or it won't go in. While doing this, be mindful of the overall cable shape. You don't want to be spinning it or twisting it any more than necessary to align these parts. Next, you need to push the round plug section of the new cable into that back opening. With the stock cable, it just stayed in place, but with this new cable, either the mesh that's over it or maybe the mold, the second you let go of it, it wants to pop right out and just about every single time, the wire just popped out of that little socket. Well, as much as I thought this was going to be an issue, it's not. The small bottom panel has a hook that surrounds that section of the cable, forcing it to stay in place. So with one hand, push the plug into the back of the printer, and with the other, slip that bottom cover into place. This will lock your cable in, and I feel like this is something that should really be called out in the guide. Next, install all 16 of those self-tapping screws into the bottom panels to close off the electronics. These screws should be snug, but just hand tighten them. Since they're self-tapping plastic screws, there is no need for excessive force, which will also risk damaging the printer shelf. Lastly, install the USB-C cable back into the bottom of the printer and secure it in place using the built-in screw. Then plug the camera, Z, and X motors back in place. There's a small slot where you can feed some of the wires into, but I found this to be a little tight for all four wires. So if you can't fully get them all in, don't worry about it. Congratulations, you have officially swapped over the bed for your A1. As a final check, look at your bed cable and make sure it forms a single natural curve without any twists or bends. If you have any visible strains, that means it twisted during the assembly and you'll need to open things up again to make sure it's all properly seated. Once confirmed, you're ready to install the included bumper. This attaches on the left side of the bed cable and the portion sticking out matches the shape of the bottom panel. Peel off the adhesive cover, align it on the bottom panel, and press to attach. Hold pressure for a few seconds to make sure that you have a good bond. This bumper ensures that if you ever tilt your printer back, none of the weight has any chance of being applied to that heat bed cable. As a final check, turn on the printer, go to the control page, and heat the bed up to 40 Celsius. This is just to check that temperature is registering correctly and that the bed can heat up. Bamboo Lab also recommends running a bed tram once you've installed the new bed, which is a fairly simple process involving downloading a piece of G-code that you run. The G-code just moves the bed to a few locations, and then you need to adjust three screws on the heated bed assembly. It probably took me five to 10 minutes to do so, and they've got a step-by-step -step video. It's fairly straightforward that I will have linked in the description. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are now up and running with your new bed, or at least have a much better understanding of what the process is like to do so. It really isn't a complicated process and having done it once, I could probably knock this out in about 15 minutes, give or take, but there are quite a few little details that I think are important. And if you're not someone that's used to modifying printers or tearing things apart, I hopefully filled some gaps that will prevent you from having unnecessary complications or frustrations. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.